G'day John for the hot end. Haven't been with you for a while, but I've got something for you today. Okay, we're back. Haven't been posting a lot of videos lately due to a number of reasons, but we won't go into that. What I've got for you today is a project that I was working on a month or two back. Now this is not a printer review or anything like that. This is something that I saw on YouTube. People were printing these remote control aeroplanes. Mostly the ones that I saw were the Spitfire model and these models are from 3D Lab Print, I think they're called. And I thought that looks pretty cool. So I went into their website and had a look and Sure enough, there were all the aeroplanes that they do. Now, I didn't want to do a Spitfire because that had been done a lot. So I thought I'd have a go at a biplane. So I purchased the plans. We're not affiliated with 3D lab print in any way. I paid full price for the plans and downloaded them. It's just a, a download from their website and along with the plans you get very detailed instructions very detailed videos on how to go about doing things as well as the STL files and even some pre-sliced g-code files so having absorbed all their knowledge I spent about a week checking settings and experimenting seeing what would work best for my printers. They recommended printing at high temperatures, uh, around 230 degrees, but I found that that was too hot. It made the parts too brittle. So the reasoning was that it was for layer height. I printed at 210 and it turned out fine. Now, most of the print is in single perimeter printing, not VARs but single perimeter printing and it's to keep the weight down and it was a bit of an art to to get it to print nicely with these single perimeters and the parts are quite large some of them and you print more than one at a time usually so away I went with Ararum filament now Ararum are a sponsor of the channel and they provided the filament for this print it's mostly PLA with a little bit of TPU and a little bit of PETG and ABS. So I got started. I used three different printers. I used the Fogatech FT5. I did all the wings on that. I used the JG Aurora A5 for some add-on bits and pieces. And I used the TiVo now I can't remember if it was the Michelangelo or the Flash, but it was one of those I used to print the fuselage of the plane. Now I'm not a model builder, so you'll see my assembly and my gluing and what have you is not first class, but I had a go and you'll see what I came up with. This plane is built completely to flyable specification, so all the weights were correct, the printing was correct, the flaps and everything are movable and put together correctly. So for all intents and purposes, this aeroplane is flyable. Now there's a few reasons why it hasn't flown. The first one being that I don't know anything about radio controlled stuff. Secondly, I couldn't afford all the bits and pieces of electronics and batteries and motors and what have you that were required to put in it. And thirdly, even if I did have it all put together and flyable, there's no way I could fly it because I know I would crash it. Yeah, it looks like you had a dead stick. Oh no. Unfortunately, we had an incident there and... Uh... And I think I would cry with all the work that went into putting this thing together. There was, as I said, about a week of tinkering with settings and then another two to three weeks of printing and assembly. So it, it's a big job. I like it. It's, it's quite impressive. 
I don't have anywhere in my house to store it unfortunately because it's quite large. So I've given it to Aramis at Ararum and I think he's got it in his showroom down there if you wanted to go and have a look at it. Anyway, I'm not going to talk over it anymore. I'm just going to run through the video and the photos of the finished article and you can check it out and I'll see you next time. Shit up.